friends this video on work energy and power part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 18 before going ahead with part 19 now let us look at certain numerical problems let us look at problem 1 it says what average power can be developed by a man having a mass of 60 kg when he runs upstairs to the height of 10 meters in 15 seconds? So we have to calculate the power when a man having a mass of 60 kg, that is mass is equal to 60 kg, he is running upstairs to a height of 10 meters in how much time? Time is 15 seconds. Now to calculate power we need work done and time taken. Time taken we already know so we need to calculate the work done. So what would be the work done by a man to go upstairs up to a height of 10 meters? The work done will be nothing but mgh. How come? Because he is going up. Work done is nothing but force into displacement. Displacement is nothing but this height and force is mass into acceleration. Since he is going upstairs, so the acceleration is nothing but g. So this would be mgh, that is m into g into h. Therefore, power will be equal to work done by time taken. So our work done is 60 into 9.8 into 10 divided by time taken is 15. So this comes out to be 392 watts. So this is the average power that is developed by the man having a mass of 60 kg when he runs upstairs to a height of 10 meters in 15 seconds. Let us look at the second problem. The problem says a crane with a 10 kilowatt engine lifts a load at a constant velocity of 60 meter per minute. What is the mass of the load? In this case, we are given the value of power as 10 kilowatts. So 10 kilowatts would mean 10 into 1000 watts. That is equal to 10 to the power 4 watts. So this is the power of the crane. It says that the loads are lifted at a constant velocity of 60 meters per minute. So what does it mean? It means that the displacement of each load is equal to 60 meters and the time taken is 1 minute. We have to calculate the mass of the load. Now what is power? Power is nothing but the total work done divided by the total time taken. So what will be the work done in this case? Here also it would be mgh because the loads are if lifted in the vertical direction. So mgh by t. So in this case m into g into h by t. What would be h by t? This is the height travelled per unit time. This is the same as this. Even the velocity says it travels 60 meters in one minute, right? So from this we say, we can say that the distance traveled is 60 meters in time one minute. So here we will put the values. We don't know the mass. G is 9.8. H by T that is height traveled per unit time would be 60 meters by one minute is 60 seconds. So this is equal to power. So this, this cancels. Therefore, m will be equal to p divided by m. Now, what is the value of power? 10 to the power 4 divided by m. Mass is equal, uh, I'm sorry, this is not m. This would be 9.8. I'm extremely sorry. So, this would be this divided by 9.8 and this is equal to 1020.4 kgs. So, this should be the mass of the load. So all you need is you should know what is power, what is work done, what is force and you should apply the formulas in the correct units. Let us go ahead and see another problem on power. The problem is a car of mass 3 into 10 to the power 3 kgs. This is 10 to the power 3 kgs. Traveling at 36 km per hour is brought to rest at a distance of 100 meters. 
calculate the power required to do so. That means mass of the car is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 3 kgs. It is traveling at a speed of 36 km per hour. Now let us convert it into meter per second. So this will become, this zeros will cancel, they will cancel. So this will become 10 meter per second. So this is the velocity with which the car was moving. It is brought to rest. That means the final velocity is zero. After traveling a distance of 100 meters. So we have to calculate power. So to calculate power, I need work done. For work done, I need force because work done is equal to force into displacement. And for force, I need acceleration because force is equal to mass into acceleration. So first of all, let me calculate acceleration. So let us use kinematics third equation. Kinematics third equation is V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. In this case, V is equal to 0, U is equal to 10 square plus 2as. Fine. So we get minus 100 is equal to 2 into a into 100. So we get acceleration is equal to this 100 and this 100 will cancel. So we get minus 1 by 2 which is equal to minus 0 0.5 meter per second square. So this negative sign shows that the car retards and this is the value of acceleration 0 0.5 meter per second square. Now we have acceleration so we can calculate the force required to stop the car. Force will be equal to mass into acceleration. Mass is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 3 into acceleration is 0 0.5. So this will be 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 Newton. So this much force is required to stop the car. Now let us calculate work done in stopping the car. Work done will be equal to F dot S that is equal to F into S cos theta. Now the car is moving and the force is applied in the same direction. So theta is equal to 0. So we can write it as F into S. Now F is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 and S is equal to 100 meters. So this is 100. So we can say work done is equal to 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 joules. Now we can calculate the power to do so. Power required to do so. Power required would be total work done divided by total time taken. So total work done is 1.5 into 10 to the power 5 divided by total time taken. How will you calculate the total time taken? Again, we have to use the kinematics equation. Let us use, I am doing it here. Let us use kinematics first equation. So from kinematics first equation, V is equal to U plus AT. Now V in this case is 0, U in this case is 10, A in this case is 0 0.5 into T. In fact, A is, A is a negative, so this should be minus 0 0.5. So what will be the value of T? T will be equal to 20 seconds. Now you put that value of T here, so we get 7.5 into 10 to the power 3 watts. This is equal to 7.5 kilowatts. So this is the value of power which is required to stop this car. So now you understand how important are the kinematic equations because with their help only you are able to solve numericals of all different types. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.